Good evening and a very warm welcome to radio and television Tonga news package for the hour. Looking at today's top stories, closing ceremony of the 2022 session of the Legislative Assembly to held next Thursday. Deliberations in Parliament continued in the whole House Committee this morning about a petition of construction companies requesting to increase the amount of funds allocated for their construction project. And Prime Minister Huakav Meiliko believes developed countries are not committing to reduce carbon emissions as discussed during the COP27 in Egypt. We'll have these and more stories later on in the bulletin, including the latest from sports. Now, I'm Bafana Dobola with the stories in detail. The Lord Speaker of Parliament, Lord Fafanua, informed members of Parliament this morning that the closing ceremony of the 2022 session of the Legislative Assembly will be held on Thursday next week. This morning's deliberation included two main agendas, the petition from the construction companies and the annual report from the Ministry of Agriculture. The 2022 session was officially opened by His Majesty King Dubo VI from the island of Ewa via the internet. Still in Parliament, the deliberations continued in the whole House Committee this morning about a petition from construction companies requesting an increase of amounts of funds allocated for their construction projects as the prices for construction materials increases together with the other conditions or with other conditions. More than 20 companies signed the petition and they are part of the government's construction project following the devastation earlier this month. We'll have more on that story. Deliberations on the issue continued in the whole House Committee with Tonga Putu Noble Representative Lord Tivakano highlighting the key issues on the petition, such as the need to increase the funds allocated for the reconstruction project as it is needed in order for them to continue with the construction of the new houses for the victims from the January eruption. There were other issues mentioned on the petition and Lord Tivakano argued that the petitioners are right with their concerns as they are facing difficulties with the construction project. However, the Prime Minister Honourable Hokav Meiliku told members of Parliament to let the government address the issue as there was already a 9% increase on the amount allocated, which was approved last month. He told MPs there is a due process that should be followed. Trade Minister Honourable Dr. Vliami Waskelatu added there was an agreement made by both parties and there were conditions on the contract made. Minister of Infrastructure Honourable Seventini Tomo said the petition was only submitted by a few, while the majority agreed with the conditions of the project as it is currently underway. The construction project includes building more than 200 homes, with the Prime Minister said 28 million paanga has been allocated. One of Tonga's goals, together with the Pacific countries made uh, during the COP27, was the call for developed countries to commit to reducing carbon emissions to not more than 1.5 degrees. However, the Prime Minister Honorable Hwaka Meliku says these goals were not achieved at the conference. Alice Dubo takes up that story. The Prime Minister says that this is because the developed countries did not fully support this during the conference as they are more focused on their economy and development. Honorable Hokawa Meliko says it's better to crucify the requirements of economic growth than to try to temper with climate change effects. The concern is because once the Earth's temperature reaches over 1.5 degree, it will be more difficult to try and address it. Not only that, but countries like Tonga will face more and more strong cyclones. Sea level rising will also rise and other effects of climate change. He added even though one of their main goals was not achieved at the conference, they are happy as the Pacific leaders plea for compensation from rich countries on loss and damages from climate change was achieved by the conference. Wagawa Meliku says that the next conference is targeting to provide financial assistance for all countries attending at the conference to help with their issues regarding climate change. The next climate change conference or COP27 will be held in the UAE. Reporting for radio and television Tonga News, I'm Alice Tupo. Tonga Meteorological Services is urging people to evacuate on foot and not by vehicle when a tsunami warning strikes. The concern is because in the last tsunami warning, vehicles were not using up the roads and evacuation routes, making it difficult to evacuate. Alice Tupo again with the detail. 
The director of Tonga Meteorological Services of Afanano says it is understood from the recent tsunami warning that the evacuation route was used up by many vehicles causing traffic and slower evacuation. The concern is because only those living with disabilities and elderly are those allowed to use their vehicles to evacuate on. Radio and television Tonga News received comments from the people of Badangata who received a similar challenge during the January event. As such, the director of the Tonga Meteorological Services of Afanunu urges the people, especially those living in low-lying areas, not to use vehicles but to evacuate on foot when a tsunami warning strikes. Fanunu says people need to ensure the nearest evacuation center nearest to them so that they can evacuate there safely and in time before the tsunami hits. Fanunu adds tsunamis can happen any time, whether in the morning, afternoon or midnight. But they are concerned if ever a tsunami warning occurs during the day while the children are in school. Fanunu urged parents not to go looking for their children at school. This is because it will cause more traffic on the road and they are concerned that the tsunami will catch them on the road. Fanunu and parents do not need to worry as the schools have been told what to do in times of a tsunami warning. Tonga Meteorological Services has conducted trial programs for a tsunami to all schools throughout Tonga. Reporting for radio and television Tonga News, I'm Alice Itupo. The Commonwealth Law Ministers' meeting concluded last Friday in Mauritius with the Deputy Prime Minister, Honorable Samu Kutavaipulu, Solicitor General, Sione Sisfa, and CEO for the Ministry of Justice, Manakovi Pahulu, representing Tonga. The meeting started on Tuesday, the 22nd of November, with the theme Strengthening International Cooperation Through the Rule of Law and the Protection of Human Rights. It was hosted by the Adoni Chambers Office of Mauritius. The meeting started on Tuesday the 22nd of November with the theme Strengthening International Cooperation Through the Rule of Law and the Protection of Human Rights. It was hosted by the Attorney General's Office in Mauritius. The theme provided a platform for law ministers of Commonwealth countries, a shared commitment to principles such as equity, justice and the protection of human rights can help member countries achieve cooperation in a wide number of areas extending to conflicts, trade, climate change, biodiversity, cybercrime, to name a few. In line with the theme, the primary objective of a Commonwealth Law Ministers' Meeting is to advance Commonwealth consensus and cooperation and to enable law ministers to set clear directions on a range of legal, rule of law and justice issues of mutual interest to member countries. The Commonwealth Law Ministers' Meeting was an opportunity in making further progress on questions of access to justice guided by the Equal Access to Justice Action Plan adopted by Commonwealth Heads of State in Kigali in June 2022. The work of law ministers through the Commonwealth Law Ministers Meeting supports the promotion of human rights while accelerating progress towards the Sustainable Development Goals set out in the 2030 UN Agenda for Sustainable Development. Reporting for radio and television Tonga News, I'm Alice Tupo. Families in the outer islands have been greatly impacted by the Agricultural Engineering China Aid Project of the People's Republic of China. The Hunan International Engineering Corporation has assisted families in Vava'u through farming of piglets and vegetables as a major source of income for their families. We'll have more on this story. Liliani Falikakala, a piglet farmer in Vava'u, told Radio Tonga News that her family has collected thousands of paanga from the new piglet farm, which was made possible through the China Aid project. It's been a year. We just started this last year. And this one year has been really a, a lot of help to my family. First of all, it, it, it helps firstly with our with our food. Whenever we lack of uh, 
you know, some chicken or um, lamb from the shop. So we just come up here and get the pig and have it as our meat. And not only that, but we had started to sell pigs uh, to the people. When they need pigs, they come up to our house here and we sell them. Probably we had collected thousands just from, from last year up to now, from selling the piglets and the sows and the boars. So this really a good uh, help to my family. On behalf of my, of my husband, Semisi, and my children, we're very, very happy to thank the, this project, the Hunan International Engineering Company, for having chosen our family as part of the program. Falikakala added on the challenges of farming piglets with hopes that she will have more resources to assist her farming. It's a challenge in keeping this house here is, is water. Those two water tanks over there is not enough. You know, most of the times we lack water here. So we, we have to go somewhere else to get some water to, because this house needs to be cleaned every day. Not only that, but uh, uh, the other challenge is the feeding of the pigs. We having coconuts together with the help of the main feeds, the feeds. But uh, we don't really have the money every day to, to buy the feeds. So we're just saving coconuts plus some feeds, some scoops. Maybe each room will have three scoops or so. So that's how we, we managed to keep this house. And not only that, we are very, very lucky to have the biogas as well. we having our kitchen down there. We are just using the biogas there. We no longer spend money on buying from down. No. We just have our biogas there for our cooking, so that's really a blessing for my family. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Agriculture's officer in charge at Bavao told Redotor News farming vegetable has also enabled families to earn income and promote healthy eating in the island. As such, Kaito says their office is planning to invest the planting of dragon fruits in schools in the island. Uh, we had to continue on the good work from the last team, especially on dragon fruit. And uh, I'm anticipated to, to promote it to all the schools here in Baba, all primary schools and secondary schools, in the way of uh, the Hunan, the, your team, will help us in welding all the stand and, and the math uh, boys and our team will do the planting. Uh, like I said before, we, we are looking at uh, maybe uh, planting 30 to 50 dragon fruits per school. In the anticipation of uh, saying that uh, the children will access to healthier fruits and then from there they can once they get the idea and the flavor, they will ask the parent to plant more. And uh, that's how I look at the extension of uh, promoting the dragon fruit. Not only that, but the meth will go in and also plant a uh, uh, plot of uh, chincha, turmeric, and other fruit trees are available here at the farm. Especially, there's a new fruit here, it's called uh, the star apples, which is already fruiting. But uh, most of our, our, our population uh, haven't access into it. And it, this is part of the healthier uh, eating uh, lifestyle we are going to promote. The Agricultural Engineering China Aid Project of the People's Republic of China has been in Tonga for more than a decade, since 2009, and has been hosting training and promotion functions in the agricultural sector. This is the fifth phase of the project, aiming to establish the improvement of the agricultural sector through a big artificial insemination center, a poultry breeding farm, a coconut seedling base, and an edible mushroom cultivation center with a big breeding demonstration farm. On the development, Deputy CEO and Head of the Livestock Division in Tonga, Ms. Anna Bifaletti, told Radio Tonga News that the project has greatly impacted the people of Tonga. The project is operated only in Tonga and Fiji in the Pacific Islands. Creative people have found new uses of plastic waste, such as recycling and repurposing them to handicrafts. 
The No Plasticky campaign held a fashion show to showcase recycled plastic waste. The campaign aims to keep the environment clean and free of plastic. The co-founder of the No Plasticky campaign, Tonga, Eleni Levenitevi from the No Plasticky says, their campaign is not exclusive to picking up rubbish in coastal areas as they have now reached a milestone of transforming plastic into handicrafts for women. This handicrafts item includes earrings, handbags and dresses. So on Saturday we had a, um, a market day where uh, a couple of our ladies from the communities demonstrated and displayed beautiful jewelries made out of recycled uh, plastic uh, wastes. This was funded by the um, British High Commissioner and we were very uh, fortunate to, to have the presence of, the, of Her Excellency Lucy Trace, the High Commissioner of, of, of the British High Commission, who presented our 25 uh, participants from the training uh, certificates of recognition. The work done in Tonga for the first time in converting uh, plastic rubbish and waste into uh, items that we can empower women economically by selling them out uh, and putting them out into the market, which was the, the reason for, for Saturday. The program aims to emphasize keeping the environment and ocean free of plastic waste. The Noble Sticky campaign has been urging the public since 2018 to keep the surroundings and the ocean clean and free from any plastic waste through numerous awareness programs. And a celebration of the Golden Jubilee of Education Christian Learning, or ECL, of the Catholic Church began with a novena of Mass at Kolonga at half past six this evening. Alice Tupo takes up this story. The Golden Jubilee celebration of ECL will be on the 10th of December, but the Mass this evening at the Kolonga Parish is the beginning of the celebration in Tongatapu. ECL is the department that looks after the Sunday school program for young children before they become members of the youth. Speaking to radio and television Tonga News, the parish priest of Golonga, Father Paulita I, says that the theme of ECL celebration for this year is a Thanksgiving Mass for the 50th anniversary of the Education Christian Learning. The ECL of uh, Catholic Church teaches uh, children about Christianity. He answered that the Mass of ECL Golden Jubilee will be held at Maofanga Cathedral and the Immaculate Conception of Mary on the 10th of uh, December. And after that, there will be a marching parade to Up for All College with entertainment and sports activities. Reporting for radio and television Tonga News, I'm Alice Tupo. Sports is up next with Mark Ake, proudly sponsored by Pacific Timber and Hardware. To Rugby Union, Tonga's under-20 team have named the 23-man squad for their first clash against Samoa for the Oceania Rugby Under-20 Trophy tomorrow at the Teofaiva Park. Samoa, the reigning champions, arrived last weekend and had their captains run this afternoon after Tonga's run. The winner of this double clash will qualify for the Rugby Under-20 Championship next year. The Oceania Rugby Under-20 trophy was the last regional competition held in 2020 prior to the outbreak of COVID-19 within the region. The one-match tournament saw Samoa run out victorious against Tonga 36 points to three. Tonga is named Sonatani Kaufusi, Watesoni Otuvaka, and Roni Vanilla in the front row. Second row, Vice Captain Salila Tu and Paula Faka Oslea. Back row, Folau Holavea, Kihem Kafalava, and Wikirotu Afiaki. Halfback, combination, Vahai Kula, another vice, and Felipe Tongamoa. Wings, Ulukaulupe Tongamoa, and Atunaisa Folau. Center combination, Captain Manu Ahokovi and Anthony Siale. Lopetikiu at fullback. Reserves, Siosiwa Sulunga, Breakaway Fiinau, Wesley Fiinau, Owen Fagatava, Tomu Saatini, Feleti Inoke, Lisiate Telefoni, and Listoni Latu. Meanwhile, Samoa squad has Junior Seuteni, Lelini Afatia, and Kelvin Fepuliai in the front row. Second row, Brennan Elisara, Henry Chiu Limawai, back row, Vice Captain Sam Asotasi, Moi Vasa Fatoafe, and Captain Benjamin Fawave. Halfback combination Joseph Went and Tauvanga Kolena, another vice captain. Wings Reupena Poloai and Bittner Tafili. Center combination Troy Onosai and Christopher Afamasanga. Fullback Wally Tau. Reserves 
pesaleli fainga, Rudolf Paulo, asatausen akwoi, sio vili, tangi lima tuyoti, eletise ese, vise sio amituanai, en asomaliu nemaya. The clash will kick off at 3 p.m. tomorrow afternoon at Teufaiva. However, the gates will open much earlier at 10 a.m. That wraps up this evening's news package. But before we part, here's one final look at today's top stories. Closing ceremony of the 2022 session of the Legislative Assembly to held next Thursday. Deliberations continued in the whole House Committee about a petition from construction companies requesting to increase the amount of funds allocated for their construction projects. And Prime Minister Huagal Meliko believes developed countries are not committing to reduce carbon emissions as discussed during the COP27 in Egypt. And that's it for tonight. Thank you for your company. I'm Bafana Dupola. Good evening.